So for the first question, what is the role of mathematics in science? Mathematics gives the scientists the ability to quantify. Mathematics also gives the scientists the ability to predict and differential statistics. Mathematics suggests avenues of research for science. It is fundamental to any meaningful science in the sense of that it is at the heart of any scientific theory that is capable of prediction. A scientific theory is actually an isomorphism between reality and mathematical model theory. There is a mapping between the mathematical objects and the relationship to corresponding objects in reality, be they mass, time, distance, molecules, money, psychological states, or whatever. The mathematical theory is chosen to match the observations as well as the possible while minimizing the arbitrarily chosen factors according to Occam's razor. The theory can be then tested by applying it to unobserved situations, evaluating mathematical implications, mapping those implications back to mathematical predictions in reality, and observing whether the predictions come true. Note that mathematics is a modeling language. It can describe nonsense just as well as something that appears to accurately reflect reality. In that sense, it is passive. Note, however, that any scientific prediction ultimately comes down to a valid logical inference. In the underlying mathematics, there really are no valid inferences in life without some kind of modeling going on. But the active part is not inherent to mathematics. It is the active of the scientists, the people defining scientific or mathematical models. At times, there can be an eerie series or sense of a mathematical model being natural or already there, waiting to be discovered. It is highly debatable whether this really has any basis in anything other than evolved human psychology, but such things are currently beyond the decent scientific theory, although some will argue that it is the evidence of the underlying mathematical nature of the universe. For the second question, what are the characteristics of mathematics? There are a few of characteristics of mathematics, but I'm going to mention a few. For the first one is logical sequence. To put in simple words, the study of mathematics begins with a few well-known and complicated definitions and postulates and proceeds step by step to quite elaborate steps. Mathematics learning always proceeds from simple to complex and from concrete to abstract. It is a subject in which the previous knowledge has a greater influence. The second one is Structure. Generally speaking, structure denotes the formation, arrangement, and articulation of parts in anything developed by nature or art. Based on this definition, mathematical structure should be some sort of arrangement, formation, or result of putting together of parts. A mathematical structure is a mathematical system with one of or more explicitly recognized properties. We may create a structure from a mathematical system by making specific recognition one or more of the commutative, associative, or distributive properties that the system might have. This next one is precision and accuracy. Mathematical culture is that what you say should be correct, but what you say should have a definition. You should know the definition and limits of what you are saying, stating, or claiming. The distinction is between mathematics and be is being developed informally and mathematics being done more formally. More formally. With necessary and sufficient conditions stated up front and restricting the discussion to a particular class of subjects. Thus, modern mathematical culture of precision arises because mathematics has developed precise, highly symbolic language. Mathematical concepts have developed in a dia- dialectic manner that allows for the, for the adaptation, adjustment, and cumulative refinement of concepts based on experience, and mathematical reasoning is expected to be correct. The next one is abstractness. Mathematics is abstract in the sense that mathematics does not deal with actual objects in much the same way as physics, but in fact, mathematical questions as a rule cannot be settled by direct appeal to experiment. For example, Euclid's lines are supposed to have no width and uh, and his point of size. No such objects can be found in the physical world. Euclid's geome- geometry describes an imaginary world which resembles the actual world sufficiently, for it is a usual a useful study for surveyors, carpenters, and engineers. Next one is mathematical language and symbolism. The language for communication of mathematical ideas is largely understand there is no popular terminology for talking about mathematics. For example, the distinction between a number and a numeral called how the list. A number is a property of set that probably tells how many elements there are in the set. A numeral is the name of the symbol used to represent a number. 
The next one is applicability. The apl general applicability is recruiting characteristic of mathematics. Mathematical truth turns to be applicable in predicting areas of application in a phenomena from across the universe to across the street. Mathematics is widely useful because of five phenomena that is studies that ubiquitous in the natural and in the natural instincts of a man to seek explanation, to generalize, and to attempt to improve the organization of his knowledge. As mathematics has progressively advanced and abstracted its natural concepts, it has increased to the host of subjects to which this concept can be fruitfully applied. The next one is generalization and classification. Mathematics gives exercises in widening and generalizing concepts in, in combining various results on the one hand. In making schematic arrangement and classification, it is an easy and uh, schematic by instance and use of the generalization. For example, the number concept is set enlarged from that of example, the whole number to include a successively fractional number, irrational number, negative number, and imaginary numbers. Good morning everyone. So today I'm going to try to answer what is logic in math and also deductive reasoning in math. So one area of mathematics that has its roots deep in philosophy is the study of logic. Logic is the study of formal reasoning based upon statements or propositions. Logic evolved out of a need to fully understand the details associated with the study of mathematics. The idea, was, the idea of logic was a major achievement of Aristotle. In his effort to produce correct laws of mathematical reasoning, Aristotle was able to codify and systemize these laws into a separate field of study. The key to his reasoning was that Aristotle used mathematical example taken from contemporary texts of the time to illustrate his principles. Even though the science of logic was derived from mathematics, logic eventually came to be considered as a study independent of mathematics, yet applicable to all reasoning. Moreover, logic serves as a set of rules that govern the structure of pre and presentation of mathematical proofs. Since proofs are constructed with the English language, mathematical logic seeks to break down mathematical reasoning for a clearer understanding. On the whole, logic is a way to improve one's critical thinking skills by not just looking at a problem, but studying the problem and implementing strategies to find a solution. From here, logic is in math is involving both inductive and deductive reasoning, which I'm going to explain further. Inductive reasoning is the process by which a general conclusion is arrived at by making limited observations. On the other hand, deductive reasoning is the process where one proceeds carefully from definitions and established facts to arrive at a possible conclusions. Moreover, deductive reasoning in math refers to the process of concluding that something must be true because it is a special case of a general principle that is known to be true. For example, if you know the general principle that the sum of the angles in any triangle is always 180 degrees and you have a particular triangle in mind. So then you can conclude the sum of the angles in your triangle is always 180 degrees. Deductive reasoning is logically valid and it, and it is the fundamental method in which mathematical facts are always shown to be true. So I think that's it for my opinion for number C and D. So thank you very much. Okay, um, my part is to explain the starting math. In the beginning, the number of the mathematics compared to uh, the reality of the physical world, such as numbers. This discovered that many phenomena had the same mathematical properties, such as the league of the stunning and the number of properties of very concrete. And those believe that mathematics 
relations were part of the reality, and that mathematic law were the essence of reality, and that real things were just number or some rules. The mathematic conclusion obtained by relation. A reasoning in reason can indeed progress to the real world. People at that time believed that mathematics was the language of God's design of the world. Only by finding such mathematical rule can we better understand God. The job of most mathemat mathematicians is to find and understand the rules so as to better understand God's in. Tensions. Then the next is the relation in mass. How to analyze a number we have、uh, mentioned before? Mainly, mainly look at the number of a、uh, few stars such as day, daughter, Venus. This period, prepare that these numbers. This is a quick start in beginning start of the idea.、Uh, when we get fam. Familiar with number, we see that there is there is something missing for from just looking at numbers, and that when we have to start numbers beyond those numbers, and that when we learn more about the power of numbers. For example, six hundred seventeen sixty one is the first level equation of the six level. Evil magnetic field and seventy is the first level energy of the evil magnetic field. The two magnetic field alone have unique meanings. They they seems to be unrelated, but when they are combined together, physical and chemical relations occur, and their meanings merge. That is, in addition to the meanings of the two stars, there are combined meaning in math. And this third phenomenon is new phenomenon. And this new phenomenon is a、uh, cause and reflective. Uh, and I will go to explain regarding the next questions as、uh, mathematics absolute or relative. So mathematics is not at all of the collection of、uh, logical rules、uh, that can be only in a certain of its branches, as the counter of transfinite numbers or so on. But mathematics has real objects as the real number or a、uh, uh, Pythagorean distance. Physics without mathematics would be only a collection of recipes, and it would be interesting to observe the Riemann geometry was previous to the general relativity and differential calculus made close to Newton mechanism and so on. So,、um, in this issue,、uh, the mathematical concepts are absolute and the background necessary for formulating any scientific theory that、uh, we have because it's allowed to join the reality and also calculation or prediction that given a certain finite numbers or things.、Uh, where is in mathematics? Uh, relative also become a system in this concept.、Uh, now we're moving on to the next questions. The,、um, the next question is the determination in mathematics. So、um, based on what I search,、uh, the determination in math is divided into four types.、Uh, first is the construction of thinking that is characterized by rigorous or tautology. And next is、uh, there is no internal contradiction or internal coherence.、Uh, first is the construction of thinking that is characterized by rigorous or tautology. And next is、uh, there is no internal contradiction or internal coherence.、Um, and the third one is it's no more and also no no less in mathematics. It just、uh, right. It's just、uh, the right amount in mathematics. And lastly, the determination in math in mathematics is think deductively. Think that's all. The next question is about does universe structured mathematically? The answer is yes, because all things in the universe are basically consist or involve or even built with numbers.、Um, the simplest thing that we can find 
in daily life are like fingers and then power petals, bugs, like which like they're almost all of them like have various of numbers of legs and then atoms, materials like sand, like and then uh, water and even plants like rice that can be measured using numbers and another thing that can be measured with numbers are space because space have dimension and dimension is included in mathematical structure um, and then one of the reason why physics exists is because this it can be used or measure almost all things in the universe using numbers or mathematical methods for example like measuring the distance between planets or radio waves this makes physics and any mathematical ways as a tool to explain natural world using their own method, their own system, and this was conducted by scientists. And next, another point, the truth in math. So the truth in math is considered a coherent truth, which means it's a truth that follows logic. Every mathematics scientist are free to choose their own system, so whatever system uh, that they want. But when they have one system, they have to follow it until the end of their experiment until they die <laughs> um, because they should follow their own system and in my system uh, someone uh, who look from outside point of view can see the mathematics as something that's subjective but when we see it from the scientist point of view from the <clears throat> own system we can see it as something objective so um, basically, we have to see math in objective way in order to understand the truth in it. The last question is, does God think mathematically? So basically, God is the only one who is capable in anything and everything. So he has the supremacy over everything that exists in his world, including math. Not because he think mathematically directly, but he created everything in such care and he thought of them all before he created. The universe itself can always be discovered and it works mathematically. That's why we have biology, we have physics, we have chemistry and other, and other subjects that involve nature. And the universe itself is much more than just a system. It's also about their dimension, about you know, from aspects like socials and to ecology. Mathematics and the system of the universe, uh, how they work, is basically a reflection about nature as a determined creation by God, but it doesn't mean that it reflects how God thinks because even though we know everything, even though we discovered everything, doesn't mean that we 